All right, I'm Justin Rowan from agriscaping.com, and so we're going to go through a little Saturday session of soil building, and uh, we'll walk you through the steps. So when you start with soil, it's like this. This is super dry. You can see how dusty it is. There's a lot of rock and stuff in this. This would be, it's got a clay layer once you get down a little bit. Pretty, pretty good clay layer, right, Gray? Yes, sir. Yes, and this is kind of normal for the Arizona area. You'll have a, a good dusty layer on top. This is not something that you really want to grow in. There's good micronutrients, but no, um, it's, it's not alive. This is dead soil. That's why it falls through your fingers. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show how to really build a good soil base, how to grow soil. So rather than having to spend a bunch of money getting good soil, which you could do, we're going to build it and grow it. Because if you grow the soil, it'll actually work better longer term and it'll help with growing your, your trees as well as all your plants. You're basically building a forest. And so what we learn from uh, we learned from nature is that there's a lot of different ingredients in order to make a, a long-standing hundred-year forest bed work. And so we're basically going to recreate that same thing here. And the uh, first step that we're doing here is because this soil has a lot of clay in it down deep, we actually use gypsum. This helps break up the clay. It also adds some good calcium within the soil, which is often depleted from a lot of these uh, desert soils which help with tomatoes especially. Blossom end rot is a, caused by a lack of calcium, accessible calcium in the soil, and that's what causes blossom end rot on your tomatoes, which most everybody wants. And so this stuff you see, we've kind of spread it around. It doesn't need to be much. It's, it, for its effect against clay, it, it's hardly anything that it needs. It's part of the, the chemical composition of it actually breaks up the static bond between the silica plates that causes clay to do what clay does, which is stick together when it's dry, and when it gets wet, it swells up and still stays sealed and keeps the water in. And so what we're doing is messing with that static bond on a molecular level so that it opens up that pathway, and it doesn't take much at all in order to get it to work. So that's kind of how that stuff works. So we put that layer down first, then we got a good manure mulch mix. Now, you'll see this stuff's pretty fine, and there's manure inside of this stuff too. And so we're gonna throw this down at least an inch layer thick, and uh, when we're working the piles with these guys, it's not too hard to, to lay down that, that one inch. That's basically your inch right there. And so we lay down, a, so you can't see anything else, that, else that's underneath it. We want to make sure we have a good layer of that down. And once we put that down, that's our base layer of all of our biomass. This is where all the life is. So we're bringing in some life. You can smell the life in this stuff. And that's a good sign. So we're throwing that down, that's the, the, basically the second layer that we throw in. And the third layer that we throw in is a, I'm just going to use this, this little bit finer chip. This is just from a tree service, and you can see the chip size on this stuff. These guys are about probably an inch to two inch on average. General rule of thumb when we want to build soil is that if we're building soil, our chip size and depth are related. And so in order for it to be really activated, our average chip size, so if we're saying it's two inches, we want to be four times that in depth. So four times that in depth. So if I've got a two inch chip size, I'm gonna want eight inches deep of this stuff in order for it to really work and start being active. So if I'm using stuff like this that's finer, and it's just a straight mulch that's really fine like that, you can see that we've got probably quarter inch size or so. So an inch layer of this is actually sufficient if I'm just growing in a garden bed. And that's in order for it to be active and actually be working as a, as a chip mulch. Now, with this other stuff we have over here, so you can see, Gray, you want to estimate about how deep you think we'd need this? I have no idea. <laughs> like four feet. So it's, uh, this is pretty thick stuff. This stuff is really So with this stuff, you're going to need about, a, about four feet worth of this stuff. But this kind of stuff we like to put in bedding for horses and other things like that. They'll chew it up a little bit more. But this is actually really good around the trees. So we're going to be using most of this bigger stuff as the top layer around the trees. Helps hold in a little bit more moisture, keeps it cooler. It's basically, it's almost like creating shade. So this stuff will create shade for us. And with a good underlayment of some good inoculant like that, that works really well. So we're going to use that in the tree area only in the area where we're going to be putting down our, uh, putting our veg beds. That's more what we're going to be doing. So these layers here, so if, I, if I've got this as our example here, because this is going to be a good veg, a veg space, we're going to be throwing down that manure layer, and we're going to be throwing down a good, good four inches of chip. And then what we end up doing is we come back, in order to really activate all this, 
we use a, a compost tea. In this case, um, I've already got some fluid in here. This is uh, mostly kelp and seaweed. And we end up spraying this over the top of this. So we're basically bringing in more life, more microbial activity. Because the first stage of building this soil when we're doing it this method, not only to layer, but it's also to make sure that we get a lot of bacterial activity going. So inside this chip is also a lot of spores of good naturally occurring uh, fungi. Now that's going to end up working longer term, so about the six month mark, we're going to start seeing some mushrooms probably showing up. And that's kind of the next phase of what we really want to have happen to build the soil. The first phase is all bacterial growth. So we're do using a lot of bacteria and that's what we're building by bringing in these compost teas. We're going to use spraying this stuff down at least every two weeks with the compost tea or a fish emulsion. Stuff to bring in some bioactive uh, elements that help break this stuff down and turn it into good soil. As it percolates down through the soil, then it's also going to start activating the spores, which builds the mycelium layer. That mycelium layer, at about the six month mark, as we're talking about it, it'll start breaking down, it'll create these uh, fungal paths that start digging down deeper into the soil, break through the clay, and they become the part that really builds the soil. So long term, it's a fungal process, short term, it's a bacterial process, and so that's the stages of building some good soil. And so as we do this, it's like this is gonna be an awesome garden. For this fall, this thing's gonna be cranking. This one's gonna be cranking. So it, it, by fall, it's gonna be amazing. Through the summer, it's gonna be awesome because the trees are gonna love the, the moisture. It's gonna love the, the building up of, of the soil underneath. It's gonna start sticking together because that's another key indicator. If you got good living soil, it's gonna to stick together and we want it to be able to go down about 18 inches. Now, for this point, since we're just doing layers right now, People look at this and say, hey, we're not getting 18 inches down, which is a good minimum for veg. That is true, but we're going to do that once we start planting the starts. So we're going to do starts, and in many of these beds, we're going to actually probably throw in things like sunflowers, amaranth. These will be good summer growing stuff that we can grow that will help break the, the clay layer down just by using plant life to then build and break down the soil first creating channels for water, creating channels for the microbial activity, and then we're gonna cut those down at the stalks and we're not gonna rip them out, and we're not gonna disturb that soil. We're gonna allow the root systems of those plants to actually help us build additional soil layers later. Deepening that down to four feet is really what we're after. So that's the basics of building soil, especially in a desert environment like this. Those are the layers, these are the ingredients, and that's basically how we do it. So we're gonna start working that process right now. We've already got the gypsum layer down. We're gonna throw down the manure mulch mix, then we're going to throw down the chip, and then we're going to spray over the top with an inoculant. So that's how you work soil. Thanks for joining us.